Thanks again to all of you that have been participating in this 12 questions video series. I've been enjoying it. Seems like some of you have been enjoying it. I hope more of you, as time goes along, get on board with this. Give me your thoughts, your feedback. It's an attempt to find out where you view things as a wrestling fan, and then it's also a good way for me to do some market research and make this show more engaging and interactive. Uh, so it's time to do a follow-up about the 12 questions about the Shield. And question number one was... Um, are you a fan of the Shield, or were you a fan of the Shield? And most of you said yes, and I wasn't surprised about that. I didn't like them initially in the sense that I thought their gear was kind of stupid. I thought, like I said, it was something ripped off from the Expendables. I thought there were a lot of storyline inconsistencies about what they were about. I thought they got a little repetitive in some of the things that they did with them. But as time went along, I started to like the group more, in part because I liked all three of the performers in there for their own unique reasons. And... That kind of transcended some of the stupid things that I thought the WWE was doing with them, frankly. Uh, question number two, uh, where will the group rank among all-time WWE factions? Some of you said top five, some of you said top ten. i definitely say top ten right now. I would maybe go as far as to say top five, maybe. But that will ultimately be... Uh, determined long term because the purpose of putting this group together you would think would be to try and create new stars so if Reigns, Ambrose, and or Rollins all become big stars and franchise players for the company for years to come then that obviously elevates the significance impact and importance of what the Shield was as a faction. Uh, question number three who was or is your favorite member of the Shield? And, you know, the answers were a little split, but the name I saw the most was Dean Ambrose. I'm not that surprised about that. I, w I wasn't. Um, number four, who benefited the most from being in the Shield? Uh, some of you said Rollins, but I think the winner was Roman Reigns, and I definitely could see that because here was the guy that was kind of, frankly, green as goose shit when the whole faction started. He really didn't do anything except sit there and look big and do powerful stuff. And then as time went along, he started to grow a little bit. He started to get a little better, and they started to feature him in a bigger way. Yeah, you could definitely see where Roman Reigns from start to finish benefited the most from his time in the Shield. Um, then question number five, I asked you, who does Roman Reigns remind you of? A lot of Batista mentions, a couple of mentions of The Rock, which I didn't really see. Uh, some mentions of John Cena in particular because of the way you fear he might be booked in the future. I see some of the Batista stuff. I look at him physically and he reminds me of a couple of guys. Diesel, who was mentioned a few times. Kane, uh, Test. You know, those are some other guys that kind of stand out to me. I look at him and the guy that I see the most at this point might be Kevin Nash, though. Might be Diesel. Uh, number six was, who does Dean Ambrose remind you of? And there was a very bit of answers here. A lot of Brian Pillman mentions, especially from a promo standpoint, which I get. I see that. Uh, in terms of his herky-jerky ring style, a lot of you mentioned Piper, which, again, I see that. A lot of there's a few of you that mentioned mankind, maybe because of his willingness to do crazy stuff. And again, I see that. To me, he reminds me the most of Terry Funk when you encapsulate everything. But I seem to be in the minority on that one. Number seven kind of surprised me the most uh, because I didn't expect this. Uh, who does Seth Rollins remind you of? And the clear runaway winner answer here was Jeff Hardy. And I remember when I first said right after The Shield had debuted that Seth Rollins was filling a nice Jeff Hardy role, and I envisioned that type of path for him. And I got a lot of crap for that. And I was sitting there saying, no, 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 wait a second. If he ends up having anywhere near the career that Jeff Hardy did, wouldn't that be a good thing if you're a fan of his? Wouldn't you want him to have that type of career minus the drug issues? Uh, wouldn't you want him to be that? And now I saw it, it was almost every single time it seemed like somebody mentioned Jeff Hardy. Some might say with some CM Punk thrown in there, or who else, Daniel Bryan or AJ Styles, there was some of that. But the one name that kept being brought up every time the most was Jeff Hardy, and I found that very fascinating. I told you so. Anyways, uh, let's see here. What was question number eight? Question number eight was... Will Roman Reigns be a future top star for WWE? And the almost unanimous answer was yes. Uh, number nine, will Dean Ambrose be a future top star for WWE? The majority answer was yes. Number ten, will Seth Rollins be a future top star for WWE? 
And the answer was still yes, but there was a little more hesitance and uncertainty there. You could kind of see in the hierarchy, most people assume that Roman Reigns will become a top star either because he'll earn it or because the WWE will pound him into that spot. When it comes to Dean Ambrose, so a lot of people seem to mention that they thought he had a lot of the skills necessary and that if he was given the opportunity to shine, he might become a bigger star than Roman Reigns. And then when it came to Seth Rollins, there's a lot of fear that you know, even though he's in a nice spot now and maybe he's better suited as a heel, that he might get lost in the shuffle a little bit and they might not be willing to push him to the top. And that's interesting. Uh, number 11 was, how many of the three will be WWE World Heavyweight Champion by 2016? At some point in time in 2016. The two names that kept getting brought up were Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. A lot of people, because they assume Seth Rollins will successfully cash in his money in the bank. Uh, contract at some point, which I'm not 100% sold on. Uh, a lot of you said Roman Reigns um, because you're assuming that it will happen by WrestleMania 31, and I totally agree with that. And I, like I said before, that was my original plan all along was to do would have been to do Reigns versus Cena at WrestleMania 31, but I thought maybe uh, the timing was right to do Reigns Cena at SummerSlam. Um, but you know, I was surprised more people didn't mention Ambrose. There weren't a lot of them, a lot of you that were convinced that it was going to be all three. Most of you said it would only be two. Uh, question number twelve. Here is the last one, and that was who will end up being the biggest star of the three for WWE. The two names that were mentioned the most were Roman Reigns, and he won by a little bit, and then it was Dean Ambrose, and then it was a big drop off to Seth Rollins. I think when it comes to Dean Ambrose, a lot of you see some CM Punk type of tendencies, and you see him being able to fill that CM Punk role long term for WWE, and I get that, and I can see why you might envision him being the bigger star of the three, is he might have the most sauce to him, the most of the it factor. Some of you might look at Roman Reigns and only see him as a look guy and being a product of the machine, and you know guys like Test. You know, they didn't end up becoming world champions. It doesn't always happen. Uh, but a lot of you mentioned Reigns because you thought, you know, either he's going to deserve it because he has it or because, again, the WWE is going to pound him into that spot. I was surprised more people didn't say Seth Rollins, but I don't necessarily disagree with that. I think Seth Rollins has the toughest path to hoe in order to become a big star on his own. It's just my opinion. So thanks to all of you guys that participated and gave me your answers. And we'll do it again Saturday, ask you another series of 12 questions about a certain wrestling-related topic. Make sure you check out the SummerSlam Review Series going on in this channel right now, and stay tuned all week long and weekend long for more content from me here on OTRS Central.